Chumbas. We're live! Welcome to the Cyberpunk Lorecast. This is the end of the month patron episode for whatever freaking month this is. September? Holy crap! It's already the end of September. It's almost spooptober, which is awesome. And we are here with our patrons. I'm your host, Tom or Robots. I'm here with the Captain Logan, the most dangerous captain on the single sea of the thieves and also the guy who almost um destroyed the podcast in the pre-show welcome back to the show captain logan <laughs> how's it going tom how you doing good are good. we having fun yet you are a very dangerous man but i'm glad that you're, I, here, you're here with me you keep me on my toes and <laughs> and you know i couldn't do the show without you so thank you for being I here. i just want to make sure we have truth nothing but truth <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you the truth and uh you know what that's that's what i'm going to bring you to you today and in order to help share the truth with us are all of our wonderful patrons and well not all of our wonderful patrons but some of our tier four patrons to join us and i'm just going to go through and introduce everybody we've got j ray back back to join us again j ray's here hey what's up jay hello hello Not much. it's awesome. my weekend now because work is now tuesday through saturday so offset which is a bit strange but i actually kind of like it well happy weekend <laughs> nice. nice welcome this is a good way to start your weekend and then we've got we've got toasty here back as usual toasty welcome hello 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 and Tur- turbo toboggan is back man i still can't get over Adio. that name Idaho and lena lena what's up you know i'm feeling very democratic today we've had elections today in germany oh well good well i hope it goes uh whatever direction you wanted it to go and no, you nah, don't, you, not don't, sure. you don't think you don't know. OK, well, I haven't kept up with it, but uh, I hope whatever works out in the favor of the people occurs. Democracy. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, we'll see. And uh, so here we are. And we are talking this week. We've been we've been catching up on some cyberpunk movies with our patrons. And if you if you checked out our last patron episode, we were talking about the most cyberpunk films. And one of them that we decided to watch this month was Dread 2012. And a few weekends ago, we had a group viewing where a few of us got on the Discord and we checked out Dread. We watched it together. We had a good time. We were chatting in the text while we were watching the film together and caught up on it. It's been a few years since I watched the film and it was it was good to see it again. So we're going to take Dread 2012 and dissect it. We're going to be talking about this film, what we think about it, what we think about the cyberpunk elements. And then, I don't know, just give our give our opinions on this. What do you guys think? Where should we start? Logan, do you have any any words before we open this up to our patrons? Um, I, I'm curious if you guys think that the if the first movie should take into account or if we're just going to consider the second film only the uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone movie. I mean, they're not they're, they're not really, it's not really a sequel to the other one, right? No, but it it is essentially from the same universe. So I just want to know, like, from your guys's perspective, do you think that the first cyber or the first uh, Judge Dredd film should impact our feelings on the series as a whole, or just just the remake? I have no input of the other one. But okay. I have no knowledge of it, so yeah, I yeah. I would say, like, well, maybe only we'll the remake because I don't think some people haven't seen it. Okay. I think the I remake. I while. think we should talk about the remake alone because it that the two movies are very different, and they're both interpretations of the source material, which is a comic book. So, I I would say let's let's just talk about this film by itself, and not everybody's watched the first one. Sounds good. So yeah, so let's let's start there. Um, let's talk in generalities first. What did you guys think about the film overall? Who would like to start? Anybody like to start? I'll, I'll jump out and, and just say that this is definitely, it's definitely one of my favorite films that takes place in like a dystopian future. Uh, I think it was Almighty Crit who, who brought up the suggestion for it. And after getting a chance to watch it again, it, it definitely takes into account what I expect and, and what I felt when I was playing cyberpunk. It definitely reminded me a lot of 
thread when I go back and watch it and I'm like, oh yeah, Cyberpunk 2077 did take a lot of uh, notes from Dread and, and use those in kind of a fun way to spice up the world, I think. Yeah, and uh, I want to recap it just a little bit just for our listeners. Anybody who hasn't seen it, you should go watch it. It's a movie that's almost 10 years old now. And it, it's, oh God. It's defi- <laughs> it definitely feels a little bit dated at this point. And, you know, once you get to about a decade old in movies, you start to feel it a little bit. And it follows uh, Judge Dredd and a, a second character who is his rookie, who he's taking out on her first assignment and they are basically judges in this post i don't know it's not post apocalyptic but it is a post um post modern world where it, it, there's the, 80 what is it like 80 million people or 800 million 800 people million living in one it's people. a mega city yeah, it's a mega city it's the yes. last um, city as far as we know right well yeah, it, but, um it is it's pretty, it's it's pretty post apocalyptic i will well, say no it is well, it is I'm, a post it's it, scary to me is that it's actually a mesh of the new and the old it's something we can really relate to and be fearful of for the future that was yeah. my main Right. It is. It is a postmodern world. It is a world where the earth has been polluted and humanity has taken refuge in in these mega cities. And this is mega city one in the United States. It is basically the east coast of the United States, all lumped into one sprawling mega city where you have 80 million people all in this one gigantic 800, 800 million people. I'm sorry, 800 million people all sprawled into this gigantic concrete and metal structure that are just streets and buildings sprawling across the east coast and the judges are are basically judge jury and execu- executioner all together and they they are the police force they are the judges and they are the the executioners and there are as they say in the movie there are not enough judges to take on every crime that gets reported the population is too too dense and too numerous for them to take on every crime. So crimes get reported and they can respond to what? Something like, what did they say? Like 8%? Six, six 12 percent. serious crimes every minute, 17,000 crimes per day, 6% response. 6% response. So of all the crimes that get res- res- you know, reported in, they get to respond to maybe 6% of them. So we find out that there is this rookie who has come through and there are mutants in this universe. And most of them are mutations that are not beneficial that end up being third detrimental arm. third arms things like this but this young woman wants to be a judge she grows up she grew up in some slum somewhere but she ends up with a mutation that allows her to read minds or at least read feelings and and see pictures in people's brains and these kinds of things and she wants to be a judge and she has come up through the system and she has made it to a point where she is ready to go out on her first assignment but and if, but she also is like barely barely they're like three three percent off from barely passing barely yeah she's she's potentially going to fail and she has been this assigned to, to, to dread and dread is like the cream of the crop he he basically you know makes it through every assignment he ever gets put out on he is he is the most upstanding by the letter judge in the entire force like this is what he's known for right he 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 commits he follows the letter of the law he he follows through and everybody knows dread by name as as like the top of the judges and he 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 agrees to take her out on on this assignment an assignment comes through he allows her to choose the assignment from the ones that are coming through they head out on this assignment and they get to this gigantic mega building and somebody there has been there have been some deaths they look into the deaths the deaths are connected to some sort of gang activity in the building having to do with this slow-mo drug and all hell breaks loose they end up caught in the building stuck in the building hunted down by the gangs and the uh the the kill (laughs) bounty that is put on their head by the gangs for anybody in the building to who gets a chance to kill them will be rewarded and that's basically where the film takes off and if you haven't seen the rest of it go watch it there will be spoilers from this point on because we will be talking about some of the events in the movie um, so if you don't want any specific spoilers, 
then you may want to be careful with the rest of the, the podcast from here on out. But that that's where that's where the the movie goes. And as an action film, it picks up from there because they are in a very precarious situation. They are two drudges, ju- drudges. They're two judges who are fairly well equipped, but they're in a mega building with thousands and thousands of occupants and very dangerous uh, <laughs> gangs who have trapped them into this location and are hunting them down. And there is nowhere it's safe for them to go at all. And it just becomes more and more tense as they go. And and the, the gangs are just merciless, especially Mama, the head of the, the gang that has taken over this building. And way more than that, we come to find out, is just the most sadistic of the gang leaders, maybe in the city. Well, she... She's like, she basically was, and she was, so she was an ex prostitute that, uh, after being cut up by her, her pimp, uh, decided to take over a gang from the inside and then started to work on producing drugs to distribute, to start working as more of a crime Lord than an actual, uh, just gang leader and stuff and relying on theft and extortion. Right. So she basically industrializes the whole operation in order to make lots more money. But she is uh, she's almost like this mix between like a uh, like an industrialist and the Joker in a way. She's she's just she's willing to kill anybody in any moment. She's just off the rails, sadistic and almost insane. And you can see it in the eyes of, the, of her, her subordinates. They just are, are fearful of her and what she could do to them at any moment. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So that's that's the that's the rough plot of it. Um, what did you guys think? Let's go with Toasty uh, since he's the one that hasn't seen it. Toasty, what are your impressions? Well, let's, let's start with Toasty. Toasty, <laughs> what uh, what specifically do you want me to talk about? Well, did let's you let's question. let's start with just general enjoyment? Did you enjoy the film? Yes. Yes. What did I you did. enjoy about the film? Um. I mean, it was a good action movie. Like, it was very much an action movie. There wasn't much going on in a lot of the other stuff. Like, not really any, like... I mean, you got, like, a little bit of character development, like, right at the end. But other than that, it was pretty much just... Okay. Um, But as far as the action and bloody, gory stuff, definitely fun and cool. Cool little, like technology things like the guns and whatnot were enjoyable like the different mm-hmm. settings on on uh dread's gun or the the fact like that he could switch it to like kill mode or um like uh hot shot hot shot or the like beginning. The, the guns themselves had um coding on them that they could read the the user of the gun to know if it was the right person using the gun whether they would operate or blow up <laughs> because it was the wrong person using it things like that yep so. Did, it, did it feel cyberpunk when you watched it? Yeah. So the beginning oh, of it did, yes. this is, I guess this is, this is Logan trying to pull out the controversy. Um, Not really. I, I genuinely just want to know straight. So from I'm, I'm looking no. back from my notes because I, I mean, I wasn't, I was taking notes while I was doing it. Um, I thought the beginning of it was extremely like, I, I was like looking at it and I was like, is this just East coast night city? Cause like, there was like desert badlands area, which was definitely like, you know, reminiscent of 2077. I thought the mega buildings looked pretty much identical to what we see in 2077. To be honest, they looked exactly the same. Um, I would argue that they're even bigger than what we see. Oh, they're definitely bigger. Night the City. cyberpunk yeah. 2077 ones aren't very vertical, but then again, the vertical stuff in 2077 just doesn't exist. So Yeah. I think they looked a lot bigger. They were like 200 stories or something. So they, they are the size tall. of like some cities in a, in, in a building yeah. or at least population wise. Right. Right. They like, they are an entire, you know, a small city yeah. in, in just a single structure. In they some like 75,000 individuals in right. the, the particular one we were at. Um, I thought that the hall of justice kind of just like looked like Arasaka tower as well. Uh-huh. Like being this giant, like black sleek building um, in the middle of the city. I was like, wow. Um, slow-mo inhalers, air hypos, 
Like there was so many elements of it. And now that I'm looking back on them, I'm like, yeah, that's like so many cyberpunk elements. In or maybe not the air hyper, but what the uh, maelstrom gives you in the uh, prologue. It's air hypo. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's so everything. Yeah, they, they suck it in every their, drug in cyberpunk goes into an air hypo, and then you take it. Oh. So it's an inhaler essentially, and you do all the drugs like that. The one at the beginning is with the the game or with the maelstrom is specifically black lace. But yeah, yep, okay. yep, yep. So same kind of uh, transmission into your body. It's not yep. injected. It's it's just breathed in through your mouth. So okay. Yeah. So once they get to the building. Does that part like and and this is a good question because we label this as one of the best cyberpunk movies and I'm putting this in quotes. Um, the beginning feels like it's in a cyberpunk world, but once you're inside the building, does it still feel cyberpunk? I mean, sort of. I think like they start focusing in on the action, um, so you don't really see it as much, especially like. I mean, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, like the whole psychic abilities thing, I thought it was cool, but it was kind of like more sci-fi feeling rather than cyberpunk feeling. Okay. So it's not, I don't, I can't think of anything where we hear people having like psychic abilities. Um, so specifically I mean, I in like it was cool, cyberpunk 2077, think, is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I didn't think that, that was like, particularly cyberpunk right um turbo we dealing- is raising oh, his hand real quick i want to yeah like the, once we get into the building the most like s- lot of the cyberpunk kind of stuff uh I, I i feel tapers off except for maybe like the weaponry and like their equipment that's only thing that's really cyberpunk like their technology like like the one computer guy uh, whenever uh, I can't remember his name, I can't remember what she calls him. I don't think they ever tell, call him a name. Do yeah, <laughs> I just I just call him Carrot Top because he looks kind of like Carrot, Carrot Top the comedian. He's Aww. definitely a net runner. That was super net yeah. runner stuff it's for me. General Hux, you guys. General Hux, it's the same actor who plays That's General Hux him in the in Star Wars top. movies. Yeah. Well, Carrot Top and uh, the Dreads, <laughs> like when their their guns are they're like the medical equipment. It's like, like the only like cyberpunk thing. Otherwise, it just seems like a uh, like a like your average like gang is taking over a building and you, it's just survival because okay. they don't really have any of the it's not really a company that's oppressing anyone it's a, it's a gang so it's not it's more of a I don't know what genre that would be well it, in cyberpunk it's the corporations and then the gangs yeah. so you have you have this big yeah. stratification between the haves and the have nots. And these gangs manipulating their situation in order to basically leverage that that distance between the two in order to, you know, uh, basically they're manipulating everybody in this building, the common people. Like you look at the common people, there, there are situations where like the common people are doing clearly over and over again things they don't want to have to do because they have no choice. And the gangs are leveraging that to their advantage. Um, to me, the med bay was a cyberpunk element they had do you remember Mm -hmm. the doctor um kind of having that sort of like station with the neons and the double two doors um that was pretty cyberpunk and also the skate park uh on the side of the building because you know skate culture is kind of associated with um being a rebel and a punk and that kind of put the punk element into it a bit that's true. Um, That's true. Also, like, the fashion and and just the industrial look of Mama Mama and her her colleagues. I mean, it was a bit closer to today's fashion, but it still had that kind of ruggedness that comes with um, you know living in derelict and living in um, in or I guess what do they call in cyberpunk the style that is all substance, nothing else uh that's chic no substance not style oh um oh gosh what is it called all the labels for these things i forget the names of them but it's the one where it's basically just trying to survive nothing else it's the militech looking ones right oh no that that's like uh oh god i'll look it up yeah we'll have to look up the names Uh, again i forget all the different names um entropism or entropism 
Yeah, entropism. Entropism. Okay. Necessity over style versus neo kitchen kitsch. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while since I thought about those. Um, I'll just say how angry it made me with that skate park. I didn't like the skate park. You didn't like the skate park thing? Why the hell are people doing, have a skate park 70 stories in the air? Because they don't have room for it anywhere else. 76. It's it's because how many kids die in that scenario? No, 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 there's a reason for it. There's a look at it, and there wasn't really a way they could fall off the edge. There was no railing or anything. They could literally just walk off the edge. But there was like surroundings. And there, then there was railing within the surrounding. There, there's know. also a reason for it. They don't have room for it anywhere else. Yeah. The, it, it, it goes to show the, the limitations of the, the space, the space limitations. They don't have room for it on the inside. It's something that the community wanted. And so they built it and lashed it onto the outside of the building in a way that the building was never designed for. It's it, these kinds of things happen. Like you look at um, what's the big city that grew up in was it Kalman it was- Kalman City in in China, where they just kept on building things on top of things and top of things on top of things, and like this is something that humans do when we don't have space for things, we we build it out in ways that aren't safe. It's it's a very human thing. Um, but population yeah. control. Yeah, yeah. I actually it, thought it's, it was built on like an air conditioning unit on the side. That's why I originally thought or like what my memory and stuff. Right. Like and in this idea of kids going and doing this stuff without their parents, you know, being careful with them, it happens all the time. I mean, think think back to like a few decades. Like kids would go ride their bikes out in you know, like without their the parents ditches. knowing where they were going the woods. in, you know, in the evenings, in the dark, like we, we don't do that so much today with our, with our kids, but like in the seventies and eighties, like how many times did I just go off in the evenings when I was like a middle school kid and I would just take my bike and drive, you know, ride a few miles away. And my parents didn't know where I was like, like that, there that were times where, like your, your parents would tell you in the morning on weekends, like, go outside and play and you'd be outside for the whole day and they'd have no idea where you were no for idea. that whole day. No idea. And then when you're supposed to come in and eat dinner and you don't show up, they're like, okay. Yeah. Like this kind of stuff was normal. So like, yeah, this kind of crazy stuff would happen. I think that that is, that is very real. Lena, we haven't had a chance to talk to you much, much about this stuff. What, what do you think so far? Um, I like the movie. Although action movies are not particularly my kind of movie, but I, I was kind of, I don't know, like the movie was, was very short, I thought. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was surprised that it was over because it, it's just like one and a half hours. And I liked that it's kind of like this minimalist story of two people stuck in a building in lockdown, like fighting their way out. I liked that a lot. And um, so I also like that the movie just has this one setting of this peach trees building and maybe um, to come back to like the cyberpunk cyberpunk aspect of it I just think I want to see cyberpunk aspects in it especially as the building goes into lockdown because I don't know there are a lot of characters in that movie who are just like products of their environment and especially like mama and just imagine like that guy from the med bay is there any other med bay in this whole bu- in this whole building like there are 80,000 people in this building and you don't see another med bay I don't know, like the circumstances are just so desperate and you have like this overpopulation thing. You have drugs, violence, gangs. So maybe that's my question for like you guys. Is this cyberpunk like these social aspects? These, I don't know. That's what I see in this movie, but I liked it. Yeah, the I think very much so. I, I think, Logan, you would agree too. this idea of um, low quality of life, but high technology is is very yeah. cyberpunk. You see it in Cyberpunk 2077, um, the, the building you live in, the V lives in very low quality of life. These little one room apartments and you go outside the apartment, there's junk everywhere. Everybody's living on top of each other. 
Um, it's, it's all very dense. Everyone's packed together. Um, everybody's, everybody's poor. Everybody's just sustenance living. You're just getting by. You barely have enough money to pay for the food, pay for a place to live. Most people probably can't even afford a car. Um, you're just, you're just getting by. The majority of human beings are living at poverty. Then you have some people who are extremely wealthy and the people who are wor like working their way up the corporations are so desperate never to fall out of those positions because they know that it's either live in poverty or fight your way up to live extremely wealthy. There's, there's almost no middle class. There's nothing in the middle. And so that's why they're so dog eat dog in the corporate structures is because they know if they ever fall out of that position that they're just going back to poverty. It's there's just no middle class anymore. It, it's almost like um, a feudal society. Again, things kind of move back into that feudal world where you are either at the top of the system or you're at the bottom of the system. There's nothing in the middle. Um, so, yeah, in that sense, this is this is where this is at. Um, it's also why, you know, somebody like uh, um, the what what is her name? I forget her name. Uh, the the other judge, the the rookie. Anderson Anderson, um, you know, one, she wants to be a judge for these novel, you know, like these very good moral reasons. She wants to make a difference. She grew up in a building in, in you know, where she saw poverty and she saw crime and she wants to make a difference. But it also is one of those things where, like, if she doesn't make this work out. What else is she going to do? She Pretty much. To, she has to start over, right? So she's 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 going to make this work. She, and she's decided that she's going to make this work. And 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 she's such a good character. She's she's like you can see it in her eyes. What did you guys think about her? I didn't really get that impression from her though. They like explained her backstory of like she her parents died, she became an orphan, they pulled her and put her into the judge program. I don't think there was anything where she like wanted to go into the judge program i think she just got put into it and that like that's the impression i had because like even at the end she didn't give a shit about whether she was a judge or not she just said i'm gonna do the right thing i'm gonna i'm gonna push back on that and say that she she passed as much of the test as she probably could within marginal she knows the laws she knows what she has to do she knows she has to prove herself it it isn't until she actually goes through the point of the whole judging thing that she realizes like that whole building is a test of her of her, of her how much she can empathize and and i'll point to the room where she uh she's on one of the floors and uh they break into the one room and the woman has a, a child sleeping in the in the room next door mm -hmm. and she's like she she won't raise any alarms because uh her husband's out there and she just wants uh the the judges to get out of there she doesn't want her husband to get killed and then she realizes that they've already killed her husband and she that's one, her husband. one little flag that yeah. is like hey she doesn't she re, she's realizing that this may not be the thing that she actually wants to pursue after all no, but i don't I, think it didn't seem like she was like she seemed like she was forced to go through like they just pulled her they were like here's a child she has no parents let's put her through the program because we can um because like who's gonna tell us that she can't do this and i'm sure that the reason that she did so bad on the tests in the first place is because she was that empathetic the entire time like she gets like the character development of seeing like all these things like during the movie of like her empathy with people and whatnot. But I think the reason, because whenever you're taking a test and you have to do everything by the letter of the law, maybe she picked wrong answers or something during this test or did wrong things during her testing program, because that's how she sees things. And she wants to go the empathetic route when you can't do that. Like we see that from dread where he's just straight up like, you know, Cold if I come back here and you're still here, I don't care if you're poor and literally have nowhere to live. I will take you in with the homeless guy. Like he mm -hmm. does not care. And she doesn't seem like she, there's at any point in the movie where she has that mentality at all. She seems like she cares the entire time, <laughs> which is why she's a good character. She's the best character in the movie, in my opinion. But well, she's, she's a wonderful counter to him. She's, she's a balance to his cold, cold and, and by the letter. And she's, you know, caring and emotional. Yeah, I commented about it. She kind of humanized him a bit, right? You know, 
Right. Lena, you were going to say something about it. Uh Oh, I think you're muted. You're muted. I am. Uh, I don't really think that she's muted. Uh, wow. Really... <laughs> That's fine. Guys, guys, Word. 3 a.m. in the morning. Bye. Um, I don't really think that she doesn't care. I just think that like she has really high standards in terms of her, I don't know, idealism. And she just gets confronted with like the reality that it's just not black and white and you have this judge who like doesn't give anything about anyone in this whole building and i don't know i think her character arc is just about realizing that if she goes into into this job she is not able to like have these high standards anymore I think that the the third prong of all of this is that it, it comes down to survival. I think that what he's teaching her is oftentimes in these situations, if you let your feelings dictate what you're doing with this stuff, then it will get you killed. That in a lot of the situations, his cold calculating response is the thing that's going to keep them alive. Yeah, well, then you start getting into that aspect of like, um, if you're losing all sense of humanity to just to survive, is it even worth it anymore? Right. But but in this very specific situation, it's like they are put in a situation where they have to make those hard choices in order to get out of the situation. Like, this is not a normal situation. This is a very specific you you are caught in a trap and there's only one way to get out kind of situation and you don't have to do what is necessarily make you don't have to do the the worst things but you have to protect yourself and i don't think that there's anything specific that judge dread does that doesn't follow the letter of the law like every time and, and i was thinking about this watching through this um and i think this have seen this movie maybe four times now this this most recent time every time he kill somebody it's because they are assaulting a judge which is against the law it is against the law for them to assault a judge they are making the choice to do that when the when the children come and attack him he puts his gun on stun he doesn't kill them he follows the letter of the law they are juveniles and he doesn't kill them he stuns them right I did could, really like that, by the way. It was a good yeah. character choice for he him. Could have killed I think them. That was, I think that was character development, though, because I believe the moment before he did that, he told them that he didn't have a problem killing them if they kept doing this. And then he didn't kill them anyway. But I think that was him intimidating them. That was him trying yeah. to talk them out. That was him trying to scare them into making the right choice so that he didn't have to stun them that the best choice would have been for them to choose not to do it because then they wouldn't have broken the law the best choice was for them not to break the law the second best choice was for them to break the law and then for him to to use non-lethal force it's just up to the interpretation there because they don't make it clear whether what it is or not yeah because i mean they yeah. don't say you know he he wasn't intending to kill them at all. It was just an intimidation tactic. Well, in, in many not. movies, they'll, they'll put a nod at it. Like there, there'll be a, a, like she Anderson would have given him a look like, please don't kill them. And then he would have switched his gun to stun or something like that. They would have given us a, like a, a hint of like, okay, something changed his mind. And I don't think we got that. So my sense was that he was never intending to kill the children because he's not a child killer. He's, he's somebody who follows the letter of the law and in his mind, it would not have been the right legal thing to do to kill children. They were adolescents. They should be stunned. Like, that's the letter of the law. That's what he does. That's my yeah, sense of it. I'd agree. Um, so. It's just the video game coding coming in. You can't kill children in video games. It just got <laughs> turned on in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. All right. Hey, we got to take a, a break to thank uh, you guys and the rest of our patrons. And then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about um, the rest of the movie and uh, kind of how it wraps up. So stay tuned for that. Uh, 
All right. This is the middle of the show. Thank you guys. Thank you to all of all of you guys, especially, and also to the rest of our patrons, all 18 of our patrons. Thank you for supporting the show. You guys are awesome. I really do appreciate it. You're what helps me to do this as a full-time thing. So I really, really do appreciate it. I will be working on the t-shirts that I'm going to be adding to the Patreon. And that means that you guys as our updated patrons will get t-shirts. If you continue to support the show, I'm thinking about doing the different gangs from, uh, 2077 as logos on t-shirts. You guys think that's a cool idea? Yes. Think? That looks that looks cool. You want like <laughs> a, like a maelstrom, like a moxes, like that stuff on shirts. Can I give one little idea? Sure. Hard. Yeah, I'm down for uh, it. Maybe the two companies and a nomad, like the uh, nomad groups. Okay, I could do that too. Uh, yeah, for ideas. I, I like. I give me ideas. I want ideas because I haven't committed to finishing these yet. I've, I've been working on a bunch of other projects, but um, I should have some time over the next two weeks to finish this up and to get this launched. So, and what this means is that I'm going to add this to the Patreon, so the prices aren't going to go up. So anybody who is currently, you guys specifically, who are currently the upgraded patrons, the twenty-five dollar tier patrons, will be getting T-shirts at no extra cost. So. I'm adding extra stuff. It's going to cost me more money, but you guys get this stuff for free. So I hope you guys stick around Thank because that you. means every three months that you stay on for patron as patrons, you will get t-shirts and you just got to make sure that your shipping address is accurate and then you'll get t-shirts sent out. And these will be limited edition, which means that these shirts will only go out to you guys and will never go up on the robots radio store. So people who are patrons will be the only people who ever have these shirts, which is super cool. And then they will cycle out. And then the next year's set of shirts, the four shirts that will go out that year, will be, again, limited edition. So people who sign up that year will get those shirts. And then those will go away and they will never be up again. So you can wear them. You can wear them on the episodes that you join us. You can show them off and be like, check this out. I got the shirt. You guys didn't. And it'll be super fun. So yeah, there's, there's some good ideas. If you have any other cool ideas, especially the kinds of logos that work really good as like being replaced by cool looking textures and stuff, let me know. Cause that's, I'm going to do like these simplified, really nice kinds of stuff that work really well as, as t-shirts. So, um, but yeah, that's going to be set up. That's coming very soon. And thank you to all of our patrons. You guys are amazing. And I'm going to thank people who signed up this last month because uh, might as well do it right now. So we have, we're going back through. Um, we have some new patrons this last month. Robert E. Noodle Al Dente, Jacob L. and Andrew D. signed up in September. So thank you to you guys for joining the patron, Patreon. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Let's move on with the rest of the show. Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention. I've been doing uh, streams in the mornings. I'm going back to working on editing podcasts and streaming and things every morning during the week uh, with my coworkers. So if you guys want to hang out with me on twitch.tv slash robots radio starting around 8 or 830 in the morning, you can come do that during weekdays. And whether I'm working on stuff, I can answer questions about content creation, editing, graphic design, editing podcasts, video, any of that stuff. Come hang out with me. We've got a fun group of people just kind of hanging out and stuff. And if I get extra time, I'll be streaming games and stuff too. So lots of fun stuff to do there. Come hang out. And that's what I got going on in the morning. So I'd love to, I'd love to see you guys and you can be my coworkers. Cause I work here by myself with my pups. There's even a pup cam. So if you want to look at dogs, you can do that too. They're very cute. One of them looks like a bear, a really tiny bear, really, really tiny. So, all right, let's talk about dread. Let's talk about dread some more. What did you guys think? about let's talk about the darker side of this stuff about the gangs about mama about where this ends up going towards the end of the film turbo you're gonna say something no offense that i i can't i'm gonna use some language but she's one of the most fuck, fuck <laughs> up people i have ever she has a, she, her life it, it away, but jesus christ how she just treats violence she's like it's like skin, like skin them. Oh and yeah. They're, they're, they 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 give her her like there's like other employees are like give her options for to make the torture worse. She's like, eh, do it. I don't care. It's like it's like how easily she just ups the violence or she treats people like the time she has the knife to her her one of her guys 
belly and stuff. It's like, holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty intense. She's the actress who plays Cersei Lannister in the Game of Thrones stuff. She's she's done a lot of other stuff too. Yeah, I've she does crazy bitch real good. <laughs> yes, yes, she does. She's 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 a good actress, especially for uh, crazy, power hungry, oh, insane people. Great actress. For what she was doing in this stuff, like. <laughs> okay. Yeah, those those that guy that she had the the knife to the uh, that the net runner guy. I'm just gonna call him that because it's essentially what he was. Because like that dude was. I don't think he was ever like okay with being there. her little henchman she like he was basically just forced into that position and is just in a constant state of like i do this or she tortures me slash kills me or something because there's that little flashback at the part where it shows that guy getting his eyes gouged out that's the same guy she gouged out his eyes to put in those net runner eyes <laughs> and it was like oh dear oh <laughs> it shows realize. a little clip of that whenever she like Anderson looks into his head. She gouged out his eyes to put in those fancy computer eyes. He was never like voluntarily there. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that was him. Yeah, that's the same guy. He's not in a good position. <laughs> yeah, he oh, doesn't want to so be much there. Worse. He doesn't want to yeah. be there. He, he ran. He was like, "I can get out of here." Okay, fine. <laughs> he was like, "Nope." <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was pretty kid. crazy. And she was, she was just not. She didn't mind killing or anything at all. I mean, she mowed down an entire floor of the building with like three fancy high tech miniguns. Yeah, she just didn't care about her own men either. No, definitely not. Well, she and she even enjoyed it. I mean, she was the kind of person who enjoyed harming other people like she you could tell there was a certain amount of like enjoyment, sadistic enjoyment. I, I got real confused for a moment i thought they were gonna go somewhere with that they didn't besides the fact that she was just crazy i thought for a moment during the movie that she was a mutant really because there's a part where he peeks around a corner and i guess you can just have really good eyesight but the lighting isn't ex- exactly great with all like the sun coming down through the center of the mega building he, he so being... the shadows are pretty crazy dread, dread. he's like peeking around the, the corner and like you can barely see like not even half of his face and she just instantly targets in on him like she sees him and she points him out and then she knows exactly where he's going the entire time he's running away and knows exactly where to like shoot at him and so i thought was like is she a mutant and like psychically detecting him like this uh, like but Hmm. they didn't do anything with that and i was really confused by it i think she just knows the layout of the building so well that there's yeah. only so many corridors that he could come into. Why else would she set up those mini guns there if she didn't have an idea of how that building layout is and where he's at? Yeah, I just I I thought for a moment because like she picked them up with no one else. Like like I guess you could just barely see it, but I felt like in that situation, it's pretty much impossible to see him there. But it's fine. Oh, Jerry's back. Hmm. Yeah, I, I hadn't I hadn't considered that. Um, but that would have been an interest an interesting angle on it was that she was somehow different but no i think she was just like insane enough to and well and and kind of a genius in her own her own way to manipulate the situation she had actual other judges on her payroll that's genius i thought that was an interesting twist and and a really cool way to kind of up the uh ramp up the difficulty of the, the video game that's what i was going yeah right. I, like, I had video game how can we make this time. even more difficult okay let's throw a bunch of judges against them and see if they can beat the other judges, the other judges. Um, it's like julia and De- a ju- death loop it's like when when another julia comes in your death loop game it's like that's like <laughs> that could be another player that's right. like they're they can, they're not ai they think just let's, as much let's as you not are just, no death loop spoilers please <laughs> oh there's no spoilers uh, death loop there's is no a spoilers game where other people Julia invade your game, your game and you have to fight them um but okay. the judges play an interesting role because at this point we know that dread is basically out of ammo and there's only one kind of ammo for his gun so how is he going to get more ammo to explain how he's managing to make it through all of these floors killing all of these gang guys and it's like oh well you have a bunch of judges come in he kills the bad judges and then he has his ammo restocked right i mean it also shows how Airdrop. It, it i mean it, it does two things it shows how 
good he is at sussing out a situation the, the 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 ability he has when he confronts the other judge to determine if the other judge is straight or not and the fact that he is even willing to question if that judge is on the up and up and he he can tell by the way the judge interacts with him that something's wrong and he's willing the logic to, he the, did the, the logic great. right the, the the way he logic that out and was able to like figure that out and and make a decision right away and secondly it we were talking about anderson and her her empathy and the fact that she was able to suss out the other judge in her own way that was all psychic yeah she used her psychic abilities to suss her out right but they both they both were presented with a situation where they had to suss out another judge and in their own ways overcame it is interesting it's true. and they true. they did it in different ways but but were both able to overcome the same difficulty is is kind of neat it's, it's kind of a cool anderson's situation. was so satisfying to me because that that judge was talking smack of like yeah she's gonna hesitate and not shoot me because i'm another judge and that's when i shoot her and just anderson's like psychic nope shoot right i was like that's so, great so here's here's the other thing though if um, let's go back to anderson because we're talking about anderson and her being empathetic would anderson's psychic ability balance out her empathy in order to allow her to be an effective judge in i the think it kind of proved it by the end didn't it i think yeah, she's, she's i think she's kind of an empath i think that's wait, part of her psychic ability is did you say empath. balance out balance or out. amplify well, well well in order to like i got the sense by the end of it that she would decide to become a judge in the end that not only did she pass we saw we saw a judge say yes she passed that was like the final line of the movie right well mm -hmm. did she pass yes she passed you know like that was like the, the end of it right but we also got the sense that like man she was put through the ringer she walks away limping this was a tough situation she passed it with flying colors she made the right decisions she worked her way through it it was tough but man would i like to see an episode like i would like to see a sequel of this of her like on her own maybe or like getting the opportunity starting out on her own but like at some point ending up teaming back up with dread you know like showing that she can be on her own but like the situations cross again they end up back together something like that but showing that like she's been out in the field for 10 years now on her own doing her thing she's a little bit more grizzled but like that balance of empathy and her psychic abilities balance out in a way to make her just as an effective of a judge as dread but f from a completely different angle because i think that she could be an effective judge being empathetic and also having the psychic ability to read people and know like i'm empathizing with you but i also know that you're about to kill me so i'm gonna act on this and i'm gonna you know shoot you in the head before you shoot me even though i feel bad for your situation in life you know that kind of thing turbo uh I like what you're saying about like, sequel, like just have her sh like a, for like a whole movie, just a female judge with the hat on. And then at the very end, she takes it off and stuff and like you have to use her abilities, something like that. Like she doesn't use her abilities through the whole film. And then like at the for end, the whole film, you don't figure out until the very end where she's about to judge the person that's actually Anderson. No, then we find out, her abilities with the helmet on. Yeah, I guess she justifies it at the beginning that like it kind of kind of clouds her ability to, to use it, which that's is a weird it it's a weird thing to think. Yeah, about that's just kind of a weird like she but can read that... minds. She can read uh, judges. Yeah. She can read Dred's mind with the helmet that he's wearing, but she can't she can't read uh, other people's minds when she's wearing a helmet. Right. It's clearly like, a film uh, way of making her look more human. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. There's a reason why it happens. They also play into it in a in a in a sexual situation too, where they're suggesting that she would be raped later on if she got caught alive. Right, right. So that wouldn't that wouldn't hold as much weight if you didn't know what she looked like. Yeah, yeah. The, the female side of it being her, she's an attractive female rather than just a grizzled looking dude. Um, yeah. I don't know. Do you guys think uh, like at the end of it, I got the sense that she would she would continue forward and become a judge that I she wasn't going to back out. I got the I think it proved I got it. The oh, go ahead. 
uh, sorry, I got the sense that she didn't care now anymore. Like if she passed or not, she'd just go with whatever happened, but she's going to keep moving forward no matter what. But I, just, I didn't get the sense that she like, cause she, she, she was fed up with everyone judging her. I think she was just going to go with whatever happened. Like, but she was more determined now than ever to help people, but just help people however she could. The, the last Even part of her walking away, she was holding a helmet, which she made a very clear point of her not having the helmet on her. She left it on the bike and she was walking away out of a building with a helmet. So I think that she proves that she became a drug. Yeah. At the very end part when she's walking, like not into the sunset, but she's like walking into the daylight. She's holding a helmet and she, she didn't have her helmet really? during the film. So she took it with her. Meaning, yeah, like, I, very, I noticed that I was like, she has a helmet in her hands. This can't be the same part because she doesn't have a helmet. At the at the end of the film, she's under the assumption that she failed her assessment because she had her gun taken away and she was accepting yeah. of that judgment. Uh, and then at the end, Judge says or Dread says that she passed. So she'll find out that she passed, even though she thinks that she failed. So she got what she wanted even though she didn't think she, she did. And it was because of his, his decision afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. It's, it's an interesting film. Uh, like, uh, like I like what Lena, Lena said, like it's, it's short, it's tight, it's concise. I don't think it, I, I think it's good. It shouldn't have been longer. It's a short story and it really is this interesting little story about the two of them it's it's the two of them, you know, and I, I, I think that you've got this little bit of a character arc for her and a little bit of a character arc for him. And she humanizes him a little bit and he toughens her up a little bit. And they they don't they're not exactly the same people they were when they started the movie. And uh, there's like that. That's enough. That's good. You know, Can I, I bring up one thing that I think really kind of epitomized how come this movie was so much of a cyberpunk film for me uh we get done watching this film we get done seeing these these judges go through everything that they went through which compared to the outside world no one really knows what else is going on it's just all the stuff that's going on inside this building and dread gets out there and the the control person that she, that he talks to that sends her that sends him out on this mission with this rookie comes up and she's like what happened in there and he's like drug bust yeah. And that's it. That's yeah, all that's it is it. to him. That's... It's just a non-compliant drug bust. Right. And that, that to me feels like such a cyberpunk answer. It was just, it was just a, it was just another day. That's all it was. Yeah. Right. But the thing that epitomizes this as a cyberpunk movie for me, uh, I thought about it at the very end. Uh, and I've, I've only thought about it now during us doing this show. If you think about technically speaking, the judges are the corporation corporation one. Uh, the judges aren't the corporation. Yes, they are. They're the corporation. No, the judges are to the regular people. No, they're the judges they're are the law. Tack. Yeah, the, ju the judges yeah, are not. Judges are the law. Anything. But in you're yeah. you're being too literal about this. If you think about it in the sense of everyone else are like the the people living in the city in poverty and slums and whatnot. The only thing we see that looks even corporation like, especially their big ass building that looks like the Arasaka building in the middle of the city, they are the corporation metaphorically speaking in this movie and they won they don't make anything mm. well they're, I, they're I not think for profit there's a difference they're, they're between not for profit looking like a corporation Do we know that though we only see yeah look, yeah we know that they, they don't manufacture yeah. anything they don't make and sell anything they, they test, no, I'm not talking they about test that, people to but, get in they don't hire them right they, yeah, I wouldn't they're not say the corporation they're the in corpos, this but they have a sense of order amidst the chaos you know, and that sense of order immediately puts them at a higher tier of, a, or at least an appearance of lifestyle and um, uh, status, you know. Yeah, but their their jobs are not easy by any means. <laughs> you know, they're not, no. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, they, they're not a corporation in the same sense that they make and produce and sell product. Um, it's It's not... Uh, the, I would, uh, they're probably funded by the government as well. They're not, they're a, they're a government entity the way that, you know, uh, you know, the bus or the postal office is. 
um, they may be private. I mean, we'd have to look that look that up. I don't know in the comics if it, it talks about that or not, but they're not they're not the corpos. Also, isn't it a bit surprising that six percent is how many they respond to? To me, that even seems high. Really, six percent? Yeah. I mean, a day to day, I uh, yeah, it seems high for a dystopian. Um, I mean, it shows that, that they're I... trying to some extent. Well, they are, you know, they, I mean, they and, are. and yeah. like what you'd expect is apathy. Uh, you know, no, I think, I think, I mean, they are, they're, they're employed to do so. They, they, they have goals. I mean, the whole world is not apathetic, but, uh, and they're, you know, they're employed to do so. So there is that. So, all right, well, we got to wrap up the show. So let's see final, final results here. What do you, what would you rate this movie out of five stars? Five, let's say, what's, what's a cyberpunk symbol that's better than a star? Five, five neon signs. <laughs> what if you, what, five neon laser. Five eddies. Five eddies. All right, five yeah. eddies. Out of five eddies, what do you rate the film? Let's go. Let's go through uh, to to Doesn't my. Doesn't matter how high you rate this movie. It's a cheap ass movie. Whenever you say eddies, <laughs> five eddies. <laughs> All right. That's let's... actually how much I paid for the film on iTunes <laughs> when we watched it. Was five eddies. <laughs> let's do. Let's do. Eddies. I didn't pay anything. It was on Hulu. So. <laughs> All right. So five eddies. We're gonna go. We're gonna go through. We're, we'll start with. Um, let's start with Turbo Toboggan. Turbo, what do you think? Out of five eddies. Uh, 4.5 Four and a half eddies for Turbo Toboggan Let's go to Jay Ray Jay what do you think For me if I think I had to take into account The year it was made The budget it was given And with what they did Sorry with what they did with it um, I say yeah About like 4.3 4.2 Wow. Wow. We're getting the nitty gritty here. To, I have to qualify this because this always comes up when it comes to when it comes to the. Are, are we doing a five point system or are we doing a, a one hundred point system? Is that out of four point five? Is that four and a half dollars? Yeah, is that out of, out of out of five eddies? Yeah, out of five eddies. Out of five eddies. So whole numbers, guys. Whole whole numbers. So well, you, you we could do four point five. This is this is a <laughs> yeah four point five like, like like stars like a. That's a ten point system. Okay. It's a 10 point system. Okay. So we'll do. Wait, wait. I thought we were doing out of five. Right. So if you, <laughs> so a 4.5 is halfway between a four and a five. So that's technically a half point. So, so we're doing half point it... systems out of, out of five. We're doing oh, a half point oh, system. Oh, just half point. Right. Okay, so you then. could do a yeah, four, well, you could do a four and a half, you could do a five. Uh, then I might go down to a four. Okay. So four, four eddies. All right. Yeah. Lena. I guess I would, I don't know. Four out of five air hypos. Air hypos. Okay. That's, Four that's out of five way better. Air hypos. All right. Air hypos. Air it's hypos. only way better in your opinion, be, Logan, because you be can't whatever, have half an air hypo. It could be whatever you want. You can have half hair. It could, it could be busted on the ground. That's fine. Um, you could be whatever you want, Logan. All right. Toasty. Pick pick the number and the, the object. The number and the object. I like air hypos. I'm going to give this like man i'm gonna take a busted up air hypo and give it like a 2.5 air hypos wow wow two and a half air by that's, that's pretty rough okay it's pretty low logan what do you think i i'm still kind of debating on this i if i if i'm going with my gut instinct i'm gonna say this is a a three and a half air hypos for me because uh it's just when i compare it to other films that we're going to be watching uh the other films are, are way better but this definitely takes the cake as far as action films go uh it capitalizes on what it, it it epitomizes exactly what it is it is an action dystopian future film it doesn't lean into anything too long it doesn't hang around without wait and waste your time it gives you exactly what you know you're going in for and it does it very efficiently so i, I really like that and i liked that it wasn't just dread going through a building destroying everyone like it's a doom game you know they added a little flavor to it with anderson and i really appreciated that 
Yeah, I agree. I think I think it hits all those same notes, but I think that gives it a four. I think it gets a solid four four for that. Um, I also think that it it's it's a solid start to what could have been a much larger series. I think it gives us a foundation yeah. that you could have built something else on, especially with the two main characters, the world. Um, had they expanded but, that out, that would have been amazing. Isn't it cool that it turned out to be kind of a cult classic instead of a big franchise also? I, you know, even if it didn't become a big franchise, it could have been something, mm. you know, it could have been a cult franchise. I, I would have been happy with that. Also, I, I think I agree with Logan. If we're talking about authenticity and um, like creative thinking, then I think I would have to go down to 3.5 out of 4. Wow, well, we're, Sorry, we're adjusting five. things now. That's fine. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, I, I think we're going to give it a solid 4. I think it's a solid 4. So, okay, cool. Well, next week, um, well, next week, next month, we are moving on to the next movie on our list, Akira. And this was a 1988. Uh, this was a, this was a, cl- it is a classic anime film. This really pushed the envelope for anime back, back in the day, man, the, I'm going to read the IMD, IMDB synopsis for this. So in the year 2019, <laughs> which is funny to think about whenever you get past the future time of the movies when they were made, right? Uh, 31 years after being destroyed during World War III, Tokyo, now Neo Tokyo, has been rebuilt and is a thriving metropolis. Shitaro Kanada is the leader of a biker gang. His friend Tetsuo is injured in an accident and taken to a top secret government facility. He develops telekinetic powers but decides to use them for evil rather than good. He has the same powers as Akira, the force that destroyed Tokyo in 1988. And now it appears that history will repeat itself. And we will be discussing this film, its cyberpunk qualities, and what we think about it on next month's Patreon episode. So if you'd like to join us for that, come join us. You can always sign up on the Patreon. And we will be setting up a time on the Discord to be watching this together one of the weekends uh, over the next month. So, uh, and this, this movie gets, there's some, there's some creepy stuff going on in this movie. So it might be a good Halloween watch as well. So if you haven't seen this, it's a classic anime and it's not a, it's not an anime in the sense of like Pokemon or I don't know, Dragon Ball. It's an anime in the sense of like in late 1980s, like this was made, this was animation for adults from Japan kind of anime. So just so you're aware. Um, but yeah, we'd love to have you join us. We'll be talking about that stuff on the Robots Radio Discord. So tune into that. Join us on there if you would like to, uh, you know, check this out with us. We'd love to have you join us. We, we'll be chatting away while we watch it on the Robots Radio Discord. All right, guys. Uh, let's see. Last thoughts, things that you can share or stuff you're doing or ways people can get a hold of you. Anything you want to share before we go? Let's go back through. Uh, Turbo Toboggan, how can people get hold of you or anything else you want to share? The cool things you're doing. Um, you got going on. You can find on. me on Discord and stuff. That's about it. All right. All right, Turbo Toboggan. Have a good month. All right, J Ray. Yeah, same goes for me. I'll be on Discord under Robots Radio uh, Show, all that. Um, yeah. Cool. Thanks for being here again. Lena? Yeah, you can text me on Discord. Uh, my name is Lena or Trantel Tier. Looking forward to see you all next month to discuss Akira. Awesome. And then Toasty. Yeah, you can also find me on the Discord. Um, you can join us tomorrow. We'll be having the Witcher Lorecast patron episode. So yes. That'll be fun. Um, and uh, follow the Witcher Lorecast on Twitter. Yep. Por to- favor. Toasty and I do the Witcher Lorecast every Monday night. And there we got a big new trailer for season two of The Witcher on Netflix, which we're going to be discussing a little bit about. Uh, uh, also doing our patron episode there's a bunch of they even re-upped season three of the witcher so if you're into cd project red stuff games that they do including the witcher things like that come join us uh listen to the ro- uh, listen to the robots radio show the witcher lorecast my brain falls apart by the end of an episode and uh <laughs> logan what do you got going on uh keelhauled as always is going on so head over to see a thieves look for keelhauled if you want to uh find out what's going on and see uh thieves right now we're doing 
uh, siren shrines and siren treasuries were uh, little little fun things that they added for season four. Just kicked off. Uh, I am curious to hear your guys' conversation about the uh, the Witcher trailer because I'm I'm very much very much in love with that show. Henry Cavill is a way better Witcher than he is a Superman. But absolutely yep, agreed. Absolutely. We didn't get any bathtub Superman, okay? But we got bathtub Geralt. That's, that's true. That's what really matters. That's true. And lots of scenes of him going. Hmm. Hmm. We did get a bathtub Superman though. A bathtub Superman? With Lois Lane, they were in a bathtub together. Well, oh, you know what? For a couple seconds. They're clothed though. They were clothed. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't was. matter. Yeah, I guess it doesn't count in Tosi's <laughs> book. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next week with a regular episode of the Cyberpunk Lorecast. Stay safe in Night City until then. See you guys later. Thanks for tuning in to the Cyberpunk Lorecast. This show is a part of the Robots Radio Network, a smart podcast for interesting people. If you'd like to help support the show, please tell a friend and leave a five-star review on iTunes. If you'd like to get in contact, please send an email to cyberpunklorecast at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter at cyberpunklore. Also, join the community on the Robots Radio Discord. The link is in the show notes. The music on the show was written and performed by The Midnight and was used with their permission. Go check them out at themidnightofficial.com. Until next time, stay safe in Night City. We'll talk to you later. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.